just three regular guys with a podcast. Why is it a big deal, though? Like, I don't understand why. Like, what is... Because I didn't think you knew anybody. Who can laugh at each other's expense. And right there, my knee was just... <laughs> <laughs> Who have the utmost confidence in each other's athletic abilities. Sub five. You're a sub five oh, on one of them little tricycles with the little bleep bleep uh, air horns on the... <laughs> and whose guests absolutely love joining them on the show. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> you got some nerve really asking. <laughs> <laughs> the Chupin' It Up podcast starts in three, two, one. Nah, you're getting real fired up, real oh, fired boys. up with this. I don't know if that if that opening could ever get old. I don't know, no, I don't man. Know. It's only it's only the second episode we've done it, so we'll right. We'll but test it's already it it's already like the best of. It gives me yeah. the goosebumps yeah. every time. Yeah, every time. This is and the I second hearing, time. I, I love <laughs> I love hearing a uh, oh, Botman just go <laughs> <laughs> just go. You, you got, got some nerve. You got some nerve. Got some nerve asking, asking that. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, chooping it up. Episode ten. A little bit of a late start. We we had a weather delay. Some logistical uh, <laughs> mix ups. We had a tornado come through. Logistical mix ups. We're in one location. <laughs> me, me and Tom are in one. Matt went to another location. <laughs> we forgot to tell him. That's there was right. a tornado see rolling where I through. Stand, see where I stand yeah. on the totem pole and chooping our, it up. Our uh, our guest getting a little anxious. Uh, before um, we get there, we got. I mean, we got to move right. Right into it, because yeah. we've kept him waiting for over an hour. But before we get there, um, I do just want to point one thing out. Matt wasn't here. So uh, there was a junior high track meet in Mid-Valley. So when I was pulling out to go uh, to my game, I saw Coach Schultes pulling. I, sh- I saw Sean, the one who's going to be scripting my, my yes, pro, day, pro day. Okay. Gets on his truck. I look at him. I, my comment to him was, you have the whitest legs and the <laughs> shortest shorts I've ever seen right now. Like, he was – his shorts were he's like – He's Baywatch, though. Like I, he, I love he's it. He's Baywatch. Like, he got me to cont- potentially want to coach track just so I could wear short shorts and I don't have to wear pants anymore when it's 75. That's definitely why he got out of his truck down here at the stadium and I was coming <laughs> out of the field house and he made some comment about his white legs. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably why. yeah. Uh, he owns some space in his head for a couple of minutes. Yeah, alpha move right there by me. <laughs> alpha move. <laughs> wow. I don't, don't know if don't chal- to this. Don't I hope challenge so. Schultz on the uh, on the alpha. Yeah. Um. So, our favorite segment, our only segment until we get Tanner's odometer up and run until we get <laughs> 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 until, until we figure that out. Figure out the turnpike mileage. Uh, our good buddy John Runko. <laughs> Send us the report card, fellas. Let's move right into it. Are we ready for week two Runko's report cards? I got to get him some sound. Not I got to get I'm some little, sound yeah. I'm a little nervous. for him. I'm a little nervous for this one. It's a long one. Ooh. And he, so first off, the text exchange, right? I, he wanted to do it via text, so it didn't. Uh, so no Snapchat. So it didn't it. disappear this yeah. time? Yeah. So he's, he's like, send me your number. <laughs> right? sent it to him. <laughs> Great no, friends. No, sent it, sent like it to him. Like <laughs> S- Sent it to him. His first. <laughs> sends me a text. Ha, 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 ha. I did have your number saved. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now here's the start of the actual report card. Uh, it goes, well, well, well. It's starting to come together, buds. St- Stephen Hoopy Hooper came through with the intro tunes. Very cool. Listen to it twice just because I was pretty blown away. Good job. Uh, this pod was a good one. Still moving forward. Transitions from topic to topic were still a little awkward at times. Well, what are we talking about next? Quotations kind of thing. Once again, though, half of the pod was rolling. You buds are like a freight train. Slow to start, but bud. Once you buds get rolling, bud, it's good. <laughs> so is he being sarcastic? I would yeah. imagine a little so. bit with the buds. I would imagine so. All right. All right. So Fair t- enough. Tommy Boy gets another solid bud plus, parentheses, B plus, knowledge and experience shows. Uh, I could listen to a medical podcast just with him and maybe like a doc. Hopefully moving in the future, you could have more firm, former players on uh, that went through injury and came back. Perfect example of our guest today when he comes on. Uh, a good overcoming the odds story or something. Matthew gets also a solid Bud Plus. B yes. Plus. 
Let's go. Not much to say besides he is a role player, does it well. That's all I need to do. That's Play it, your, man. Do your role. That's it. Every team needs do your role. Every and we all do our roles. That's all we need. Uh, and Stevie Wonder Hooper. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read that one. <laughs> Uh, I didn't catch that when I read that the first time. Stevie Wonder Hooper couldn't see how good that intro was going to be. Okay, I see no, you. I see you what he did there. I yeah. see what he did there. But it was pretty good. I will only admit this once, most likely in my life. I was impressed by Hoop. A minus on him for the week. Still needs to be the leader and control the flow better in the beginning. You're never getting an A plus from me, you fool. <laughs> the pot over. So now he gives full. us he gives us an overall grade. Right. Which doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Um, the pod overall gets a solid bud, B. It's a good one, but not great. Every episode still seems to be getting better, but something is still lacking that I just haven't put my finger on yet. Either way, this had been Runko's report card. Take it home, have your parents sign it, and return <laughs> it to me. <laughs> nice. Any errors in spelling should be corrected by the research and data team for chooping it up. <laughs> A.K.A. you. Um, to my only gripe, love it. Love that he is now part of the show, sends these, takes his time out to listen, sends them. But you got a Bud Plus. Matt got a Bud Plus. I got an A minus. Overall, somehow we get a B. I'll no. take it. Yeah, I mean, I'll take it. That's a win in my book. That is. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was Runko's report card for the week. I feel pretty good about it. Let's keep it rolling. I feel, like we, I feel like we started this. Really smooth. Right into it. Gave a nice show test story. Now we're getting on to our phone call. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and, and make the call. <laughs> Dial in our guy. How yeah. are your socks? I actually changed shoes and took my socks off. <laughs> I will forget them in the trunk of my car, and they will be. Hello? Hello? Al. Hey, what's up? Hey. Our guest for this week, former Division One baseball player, former Mid-Valley pitcher, current Twitch streamer. Who we're oh holding him up from, Al Baraksa, clapping <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the big time, bud. Al, what's up, bud? What's up? Thanks for having me, guys. No, thank you for dealing with you know us, <laughs> us the past hour. Um, let let me clarify. I'm super nervous, okay. but I'm also a little sad because it took ten episodes to get me on. Ooh. Wow. Al, for the record, I I uh, recommended you about three episodes ago. <laughs> he, right. Yeah, Hooper. he did. Yes, he did. Hooper For the record, I never recommended you. <laughs> it's also true. So true. Also it's all true. good. It's what, all good. What are you up to these days? Uh, I'm currently getting my master's at Penn State. And what do you do? You watch grass grow, right? Uh, a little bit more complicated <laughs> than that, but uh, I'm in the plant pathology department. Oh wow. So I work with plant diseases. Like you know what that and is. And I currently I do but... research in um, vineyards across Pennsylvania, looking at a viral disease in grapevines. Wow. Yeah, right? Were you always into that? Yeah, that's my question. Uh, no, never, 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 never. What, so what so got what, you into that? Yeah, what, what happened there? Uh, so this ties into baseball kind of because when I got hurt and I couldn't play summer ball anymore, mm -hmm. we could get more into uh, into more detail later, but uh, Perfect. I needed to find something to do so I could potentially, I don't know, figure out grad school or get a job later on. Yeah. And uh, I ended up getting an internship with one of my professors that I really liked, and it just opened up this avenue of finding out that I really enjoyed working with plants. So, so what do you? Yeah. What's the end game? What do you want to do? Um. Well, I don't want to get a PhD anymore. That was the plan originally, but I don't want to be in school anymore, if I'm being honest. I hear you. Um, I'd like to get a job with my master's and hopefully work for, like, uh, the USDA or, like, uh, an industry company or something like that. Beautiful. I, I'm going to – I'm scared to even ask this. How old are you now? I'm 24. Wow. Good for you, Al. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you got a I plan, just, man. That's awesome. Good for you. I just listened to your last episode, yeah. and I think you guys were talking about when everyone was born. So I was born in 96. So. Oh, man. Yeah. Not so. bad. Born in 91. He's only... I was in high school. <laughs> I was two. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. That's five. <laughs> Thanks. That's five. Five. Um, huh. so, so be honest with us. Okay. The, only, the only reason you went back and listened to the last episode was because you knew you were coming on. 
Uh, I needed to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Research. All right. This is why well, it took. All, this is why it took ten realize. episodes to get you on. This is why. Yeah. Well, I'm here. Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> so. I didn't know what to expect. So. So, but but you know, uh, you know, since you listened to the last one, you know we have this big segment now. Runko's report card. Coach Runko. Uh, no, I didn't get. I didn't get that far yet. It was like three minutes into the episode, so I think you're lying that you even listened okay, to. Wait. Them. I'm at. Wait, it's still up on my computer. I'm at. The this bur- is a long episode. Yeah, the Hour birthdays. Nine, I'm, at, I'm at 68 minutes. So. Yeah, we haven't talked about the birthdays. Was early. Early, yeah. It's you must be on episode. an early one. Okay, but Coach Runko now gives us a report card. Okay. So um, you're going to be perfect because I just read it off. And okay. so our last two episodes, the last one, uh, Tom went in depth about like UCL injuries, Tommy John surgery and, you know, prevention for that. Uh-huh. And the one before that, we talked about the ACL and he, he gave good information about ACL tears, why it happens, this and that. So uh-huh. uh, coach, you know, Ronco, Ronks, he really enjoys that stuff. So his actual comment was, oh, if you could get former players on, maybe that went through some injuries, this and that. Oh, Tom could God. share his experience. So, like, perfect transition. Uh, we talked earlier so I could get my facts straight. When oh, you were, So when you were a sophomore, this was before I yep. coached here, two years before I got on the staff, before Kropa was even the, the head guy. Uh, we Correct. had good old, that was uh, Punky. Yep. yep. Punky was Punky. the coach. Uh, district championship game down at PNC. Yep. yep. I don't really know the lead up. I know you were playing Lakeland. Lakeland. It, it was, was late in the game. Oh, this was no, when no, Ebar no, had to go in for a catcher. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I remember this. It was the second was, inning? Really? It was the second inning. I just got done. I remember this so well. Perfect. I just got done getting absolutely embarrassed by an Eric Rubowski changeup in my first episode. Oh, I do remember that now that you said that. I have such yep. a terrible memory until somebody <laughs> like recalls something for it. You know what I mean? It brings it up. I'm the same way, except for, uh, I guess, traumatic experience. Yeah, when it happens to you, you don't forget that. <laughs> yeah. but I do remember this game. I was at this game. So go ahead. You want to, since, you know. So that you was wanna... your senior year? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you were senior? Yeah, yeah, yeah that okay. was. So that, yeah, that was Nick Demian's. Nick Chris and Rebar's, Rebar's senior year. year. That's yeah. Rebar, I asked you Rebar before, yeah. Rebar went into catch for was, me. Was yeah. It was horrible. What'd you say? But, I heard Rebar went into catch and it was a mess. Uh, it yeah, wasn't pretty, yeah. man. It, wasn't. Catch it, was, it just went. It went real. It went from bad to worse. They had to replace the padding at the uh, backstop. <laughs> so, so I, I believe that. So for uh, for the listeners, so yep. what? So obviously, you know, Chris Rebar had to go into catch. Do you want to yep. uh, cue them in and you know go over and like you said, traumatic experience happen? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I'm catching Nick Demian's on the mound. Uh, I don't remember who was hitting, yeah. but there was a ball hit to second base mm-hmm. and uh, second baseman bobbled it. So it gave the runner on second a chance to actually try and score. Um, so he was running home and the throw brought me up the line. And when I went to catch the ball, the runner, the runner's knee <laughs> made direct contact with my right radius in my forearm, and it snapped right in half. <laughs> yeah, it snapped like a twig. And our... I have a, I think I have a video on my Facebook or something yeah. like that. So if you need like a preview for the the podcast, you can just play okay. That Great video. idea. <laughs> yeah, and you sent and you sent me pictures earlier because I wasn't sure at that time if. I asked him if you it like put two and two together. I'm like, was Tom the trainer? Was Tom the guy that had to come get you? And then he yep. sent me a picture of you literally walking, <laughs> Holding his arm, yeah. walking him off the field. And I think he said <laughs> said something like, you, day. "You were you were an angel or something. You were an angel that day or something like like that, right?" Who you? Me? Yeah. I was the angel. Yeah, you were just like saving grace or something that day because you're gonna come out and. <laughs> so so from... I have. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have now. no idea who was taking photographs of that situation. Honest to God, right? They might have caught Tom's best candid photo ever, like doing his <laughs> job. He's, he's supporting yep. my broken arm, and we're just walking to the dugout, and he just looks like he's on a mission. Like, he was like, I was made for this day. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was one of those. There's no thinking in that. You, I went out to the plate, right? And I remember he's down on the ground. He gets up looking at him. I knew immediately. Like, there was nothing to even question yeah. about yeah. it yeah. there's no evaluation like it's broke 
it was just a matter yeah. of how we get them out of here and what's the, you know, what's so the motive. My biggest, que- I guess, my first question is was, or I have a couple actually. So my first question is, did you did you know as soon as it happened? No, like I actually Alex, did you over, know? What was that? Did you know like it that it was broke as soon as you as you did it? So I didn't feel anything. So I actually rolled over, and I kind of like tried to get up. And then I looked at my arm, and this—it was just—it was kind of dented in, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. No compound fracture or anything, thank God. Just dangling though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was just. Yeah, it was just there. And then I guess my second question is: was, um, what was your biggest challenge from that injury? Um. So I'll keep it PG, I guess. I'm I'm right-handed in most things. I, okay, it's not not even keeping it PG. Wiping my butt. Yeah. <laughs> was absolutely horrible. Because I had to use my left hand. <laughs> it was a different strange. meaning of PG, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, oh sorry to the listeners. Uh, sorry to the listeners. I think but the three of us I'm in the booth were all thinking the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. But like, oh in terms of every, in terms of everyday life, aside from that, I mean, I wrote left-handed, so I didn't have a, I didn't really have a problem in school. But it was just, yeah, I don't know. It's like using one hand. It's yeah. life got a little hard. So Tom, was that in terms of like injuries that happened on the field? Is that one of the? Is that one of the ones that like stick out? Is that one of the ones yeah. that's more like devastating? Is that have you seen any worse uh, here while you were at Mid Valley? Nothing to that like to that extent as far as like Al said the deformity that he had yeah. and the obvious um you know it, it's just a matter of packaging them up making sure it doesn't get worse and getting them get them to the mm-hmm. hospital um so yeah I think that definitely definitely is one that has always stuck out to me naturally too you know it it, it doesn't hurt in terms of being in the setting that it's in at you know mm-hmm. at PNC in a district final all that kind of stuff um. So it definitely was the the thing I was most impressed with was honestly my only concern was he was taking this so well like he, huh. I I think even like we're we're sitting in a dugout I know uh I'm almost positive both mom and dad were there right uh you know one went and got the car you know yep. situ- situating logistically to get him out of the stadium and get him to the to the ER. We're in the third base dugout, and uh, I just have them sitting, hanging out, uh, splint them, you know, get all that stuff situated, packaged up, get some ice over the top of it. And he's just talking like he's talking to us now. And I'm like, I everything's am, fine. Uh, are no you sure? Deal, like, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm like, what is going really on? He, he's, he's even giggling and stuff, right? I'm like, man, this kid's different. This kid's tough, yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. Yeah, and, sir, we'll, we'll, we'll go with tough. Yeah, <laughs> definitely tough. That, but you, there's – you don't want to if you don't want to pat yourself on the back you don't have to pat yourself on the back I'll do it for you but you can't you can't go through what you went through and not uh and react like you're just talking on a podcast you know the same uh the same time you're going through that and I said I said the Hooper speaking a different I knew I knew right then and there um at that point as a sophomore you weren't an ordinary you weren't going to be one of our ordinary kids here at the school um because the thing I remember most outside of the injury was when you left and were gone out of the dugout, the air in our our sails was completely gone. I never saw, I've been around a bunch of teams, I've never seen a group of kids like completely... You could feel it in the stands. Yeah, I was in the you, stands. You just, there was you a difference. Lost it. There was I, a difference. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at some of the the older kids. I'm going, you know, There's no disrespect, be. out, but he's a sophomore. Yeah, like you know, and yeah. and, and uh, from that minute, that moment on, I mean, it, it just showed the 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 leadership, the maturity. The, yeah, the weight you carried, and uh, you I know, mean, you kind of ran the show when you were behind the plate, but it really showed like how much that team. Relied on your, your, I don't. What's the just being around? Yeah, just yeah. being around. Not you know? even, not yeah. even your play, but you, you're just your energy, your personality, your ability to talk to everybody. Like the team definitely missed that. It, you know, we could joke around and 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 bust 
you know, Chris Chris got put in a position to oh, catch and fill in. Yeah, right. And, you know, and, and he did his best. And he's not a catcher. You know, he's a great Correct. baseball player. Right. Um, right. You know, but but it still was that that bigger, higher level thing we were missing once you had left that game then. I think, I think what helped was that um, under Punky, it was known to be really hard to get a starting spot um, – as an underclassman. Yeah. So I ended up uh, making the rosters a freshman, which is, which was awesome. And honestly, that was one of the highlights of my, of my baseball career at that point. Mm -hmm. But then I, w I wasn't always starting as a freshman. And then sophomore year, I was like an everyday catcher and it just helped me. It like, it, it did help the attitude a little bit. It's easier to be a more positive when, when you're getting the time, I guess. Yeah, sure. Helped. When you know you're the guy. more, and I, honestly, like as soon as sophomore year hit, baseball was amazing. I, I was having so much fun with it. Definitely. So, now, when did uh, did did Krobe take over the next year, or when you were a senior? Uh, I think he took over my junior year, so oh. the year after. Okay, so this is kind of the first the first time I ever met Al. So at this point in my life, I think I was still in college. Mm -hmm. So I was working at a supplement store in Jessup. So this had oh, to be this that. had to be when Crow like <laughs> first got the job. So right, junior yep. my guy, like really trying to. All right, Verhox is my guy. Need to take care of him. So yep. you know, Crow calls me up. He's like, "Hey, um, you you work at a supplement store, right? Yeah. All right, I got one of my guys coming in. Need to get him set up with like some protein. Sure. Yeah. Come on in. So. <laughs> Crope walks in, Al's there, this is my guy, Al, you know, whatever introduces me, hey, what's up, send him on his way with a protein. That interaction is what got me in the door because it was like two weeks later or something or maybe, you know, a couple of days later, Crope called me, was asking me some, some input on like strength and conditioning and then I don't know who left the staff. It wasn't his junior year, it was his senior year. I just randomly get a text from uh, from our guy, Kyle Chuff, he's like, you want to coach, coach baseball? I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. So hoop, or yeah, not hoop. Uh, Al, that do you remember that interaction with with Hooper that day with? Coach yeah, Cook? I do. It was a really tiny supplement store. It was. And, okay. Yes. And so I had no idea what to expect. Yeah. I knew nothing about anything. I just remember going to Cropa and I was like, I want to try to get stronger. Like yeah. I think literally those were the words. So and did, it was like I know I know a guy. Oh God. Oh God. And, and he led you to Hooper. Yeah. So so did you know <laughs> yeah. so in that first conversation, did you know something was off with Hooper from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> Be I honest. No, Be honest. No because no only because I was so nervous to like be getting involved with something like that. Because I was I was you, really timid actually. He probably took, you're too like, you're too good. I'm gonna be kid. honest. He probably so. took like one look at me and was like I don't listen to this guy. Five it, foot seven. Not, 75 pounds. This is the guy, this is the guy we're going to take advice from. This is the guy. Uh, it, it's not until Hoop and I started working out where I was like, all right, he's a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Atta boy. But, uh, but then, so his senior year was my first year. So Al's senior year was my first year coaching. Um, and we got, <laughs> got the coaching career off to a hot start because came in. It was a, a a heck of a year. It was like a special special varsity team. A um, lot of close, a lot of memorable games, a lot of mm -hmm. close wins. Like I remember at home, Old Forge. Uh, it was a battle. Yeah. I think it might have went to extras. I think Shawnee Homancheck hit a go ahead like three run home run. Did Sean graduate right. with you? Did no, he, Sean graduated the year, year after. Right. Year, year but younger. he but his junior year is when he led first base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. And that was, uh, I want to say that year was the year that Donlin had the uh, the suicide squeeze against yes. Dunmore. Oh, Dunmore, yeah. To win, to twice, win, twice, see? I think. To win that game. And this is like counseling for me to, re <laughs> to relive my career because yeah, I forget it, about it all. But, but it was like, it was such a good, it was such a good blend mm -hmm. because you had those guys. You had Holm and Shaq who was killing it at first base. You had uh, Cody Pekavich who was having a mm -hmm. heck of a year. He was hitting like was, the high 400s. He was controlling mm -hmm. in center. Hasenthal was having a great year. Um, yep. Goolsbury mixed in when he had to catch when Al pitched. Right. Uh, and yep. even when Al didn't pitch because at that point, I think when Al was a senior, 
Uh, that might have been the year before the pitch count came in. I think it was still free for all, and it was. I think that was before we started playing three games a week. So it was like, all right, one day you knew Nemitz was pitching, next day yeah. it was Al, yeah. right? So yep. Al, Al never really could get behind the plate his senior year because, um, you know, he was relied upon a lot. To... I pitched so much, yeah. Yeah. So is that where you you you, you ended up being a right fielder, right? <laughs> so. So Nemitz, <laughs> Nemitz graduated with you, right? I'm trying to put yes. everybody together. In a, okay. And then. Yep, Nemitz and I graduated together. Right, he yeah. actually won MVP that year, I think. Yeah. I think right. he won. Yeah, like, you, was he he was player. division. He yeah. was division player of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, and yep. then Cody, right? Cody, was Cody with you? Cody was the year after me, but he oh, played uh, right. center field for us. But Yes, but was that the year Cody uh, Cody had his little drove, mishap drove, in oh, the no, practice that, field? Oh my God, he was! You could not get Cody Pekavich out that year in the in the first half. No, I think you that was his se- no. It, uh, well, so uh, we're thinking it's his senior year. He ended up it was driving his, his senior year. He, was, he right drove his car the through the field. practice field and, and got it stuck. Buried it. Got it stuck. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that was an experience. Um, but, but it was. Um, I, I didn't want to cut you off, but like, and how many? I feel like how many? Um, between like Cody Holmanchak, uh, Nemitz, like a lot of them were named all region players. And, yep. we, and we won the league championship, um, and it was just a good blend of guys because yeah. Al and, and Nemitz were, were lead, like the, yes. they held who, that team together. That's what I was going to ask. Who else besides you and Nemitz were uh, seniors that year? Oh, my. Now you're really asking me to think about was, it. Was uh, that, I know Billy, my buddy Pat West was on Oh, Pat squad, West. Right. You know? okay. But he, he played a defensive role for us. Right. Um, oh, gosh. All right, so it's not – at least I don't there feel bad. There has to be more, but I feel yeah. like there weren't. Right. So so from the – in the lineup, day day after day, it was just you and Zach, essentially. Yep. Yes, yeah, no, it was. And then we had a bunch of and, yeah. live wires and Cody and Hazenzal and all those guys. And it was yep. – Below it, you. It was good because you had – like Al, like you said, there's just something about him. So, like, you knew well, he was different. So yeah. it's like he went – and he he just handled his business on the field. Yes. And then you had like Nemitz. He brought so much he energy, energy when guy. he was on yeah. the mound. Like he's he'd a strike hype. someone. He he's like, a hype guy. He's yeah, right. super he, hype. He was. And, and and he was coming off because that was the year. His senior year was the year that they basketball basketball yeah, right. So right, he, yeah. he was yes. bringing yeah, that. Was. He was bringing that like. Um, and and Zach Zach's the Zach is the kind of like when he was coming up growing up he was always kind of that energy hype right. guy. Yeah. And, and oh yeah, he always was. And until I really got to know him, he kind of almost aggravated me a little bit, you know, because it was almost it was almost excessive to me, right. you know. Uh-huh. But until you understood him, and then that's just you know his naturally, yeah, that's it's his could. personality. Yeah, right. But whether it was on whether it was basketball, and then it and it came back over to the baseball field, he produced, right? Yeah. You know, he I did mean, his job, yeah, right. And and that's the thing. Like, I thought that was such a a, a great dynamic between him and Al that year in a leadership position where right. everybody else fell in line. They didn't need to have to be like the wardens of the team either. Right. You know, it's not like they were they cracking whips left and right. Right. You know, and, and, mm-hmm. and but they're no, two guys weren't. that also, they're the first one carrying a, a bucket of balls off the bus. Yes. You know, they're, they're, right. I, I can remember one time we're practicing in the middle school gym, Al's throwing on the pitching mound. And uh, I just happened to walk in, pop my head in, he went over and picked up garbage off the floor and threw it in a garbage can. You know, like yeah, right. it, it, that that stuff just doesn't happen. So you where know? were Al, where were you playing if you weren't pitching? What position? Uh catcher. And oh, you then, were playing catcher? Yep, and sometimes Coach Cropa would DH me. Oh god, I was not a DH. But uh he would DH me because he didn't want my arm to be too sore for when I pitched because I was throwing that much my senior uh, dude, year. Dude, occasionally he yeah. snuck you in right field. Occasionally you were out there in right that so, senior year. Uh, was it a different freshman, mindset freshman for you at all? Right and, oof. What was that? Was it a different mindset, like going from like pitching to catching? Like, did you did you kind of have to like kind of get yourself in a different mindset if you're gonna go out to pitch, other than if you're gonna go out to catch? Like, did you kind of? I mean, game preparation was always different, and I worked super hard at catching in high school because I just felt like I couldn't really play any other uh, position in the field. Okay. And I didn't throw that hard pitching, so I always thought that my college career was actually going to be as a catcher so honestly yeah, i put a lot a more catcher. work into catching and hitting than i did for pitching but i just knew like if 
if we needed a guy on the mound that was going to throw strikes and get outs, like I was going to do that. There, but um, but you also have the mind of a catcher. Like you know how to where you want the ball to be, how you want it to go down. Like that's I think was a big aspect in you being such a good pitcher is that you you had that catcher background. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like I definitely had more situational awareness over yeah. Uh, yeah. throughout that time for sure. I know I know it's probably a sore spot, but ask hand, away. That's hand, what I'm here for. Hand over. One nothing. Oh. I'm telling you guys, it is still – it's not – there's not going to be a high school baseball game that I see the rest no. of my career that beats that game. That was, Between the performance he had, I don't know who the heck – who the I hell the handover the kid picture, was, yeah. but the handover kid threw an outstanding game too. And Allen's up with the L. Like the, there is no – there couldn't have been another kid in District 2 that could have outdueled Al on that day except that kid. Right, yeah. And it was like mm-hmm. one, it was, you know, game of baseball, one like one, just, you know, someone's going to, you know, find a little hole and it was just a little poke over second uh-huh. base that got them the, the run in. Yeah. It wasn't even like I gave up a bomb and it was like, okay, that kid just smoked one off me. Like they really deserved that. It was yes. like right. stressful situation, runner on base and a little poke, like a jam shot that flared over second base and uh yeah, that winning no, run ended up scoring. Right, nobody could do anything about it. Yeah. Just that. Yep. Oh man. But that was a hell of a game. It was. Still oh first, first year coaching, probably the best game I've been a part of. A couple years later we did end up going back to Hanover. Right. And it was the same type of game, uh, with Gosler. Yeah, I think, we always I think, had I think it was that was it the state run that, that year? I feel like it might yeah, have been probably. that year. It's Gosler and Matt Clark, who they both ended up going to Lackawanna, but I think we got them one nothing. Mm-hmm. Doesn't help Al. <laughs> we did yeah. end up as Mid Valley avenged the loss. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that helps you sleep any better. <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes me feel good. It, it makes me. But feel uh, good. but going back to like pitching, and you don't see it, and it, it's the weirdest thing, like on the mound, because my first year, you had such like. How you were, how how you carried yourself on the mound, had like such an impact on me that I'm always trying to teach my pitchers to like, like want the ball, right? Because it yep. didn't matter if you threw the four four straight balls and walked the kid, your demeanor didn't change. It was give me the ball, I'm gonna get the next guy, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it. Whereas now it's like, the kid gives up a hit and it's just you know mentally broken. Yeah. Like, well, and I'm not gonna put. I'm not going to put Al on the pedestal of the mm-hmm. Adrian Petersons and Nolan like Ryan's we're talking, he has but a right, mindset, you can't. Like, yeah. That, yeah. that unfortunately, in your circumstance, coming in as a first-time coach in high school, like you got, Al, Al's not normal. Yeah, he's not, he's not the normal got, high school. I know, kid. I know. That's yeah. kind of. I'm not going to say I'm the same as Al, but like that's me in basketball. Like I can miss my first six shots. I'm still shooting the seventh, eighth, and ninth with like the same confidence. With yeah, same yeah, confidence yeah, yeah, yeah. that they're going in. Yep. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I mean, it's just a different type of atmosphere or different type of mindset with those type of guys. And then but but like that team shows like that 2015 league championship whatever first time in 23 years shows how important it is to have like, you know, leadership from somewhere on Correct. the team Correct, that's why they won. Because again, you had all these guys that, you know, hit 500, 400, whatever, but Nemitz and, and Al were the, the the glue guys that kind of held it together because I think next year, the next year when all those juniors were seniors, it was, you know, I, I, I remember we had the we had the shirts made, right, with the MV logo, the target on our back. We were ranked one coming in. Like, we were, you know, we were supposed to be mm-hmm. the shit. And we just didn't have the season we thought we were going to. And it comes back to, like, no offense to those, those guys who ended up being juniors. Like, they were great kids. Like them, still occasionally see them. They're, they're of age. You know, see them at the bar, have a beer. It's, it's awesome. Good kids. But none of them just had that right. leadership quality. So we just had a bunch of guys. And when things got, uh, when we got in bad spots, like we had no one that could kind of pull the team together and be that calming voice, you know, from a from a player perspective. So yeah. So I don't want to put Coach Crope on the spot, but that's exactly what I'm doing, I guess. So I remember he actually texted me a couple games into the season or something, and I was like, I just want to let you know, like, like we miss you here. Like, there's just something off about the energy, and I just wanted to let you know that. And I, I remember that text, actually. Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, yep, it, it definitely was. Um, so, you graduate. Yep. You go You go and play at Lackawanna. I do. For two years. I thought that was an outstanding 
decision on your part at the time. Do you know how close I was to going to Penn State as a freshman and giving up baseball? Literally five days. Yeah. Wow. So I already had a class schedule for Penn State. Oh, really? I was enrolled in the nursing program and I was on vacation and I got a phone call uh, from the new coach at Lackawanna at the time, Bruce Thompson. Uh-huh. And he was like, uh, listen, I just took over the job. School's about to get started. Every single player except for one left the team because the coach is gone. And uh, I talked to the travel coaches in the area and they said you could catch for me. And I was like, give me, give me a, a couple days to think about it. I called them back the next morning. and I'm like, let's do it. Wow. Wow. So, that's yeah. nice. That's <laughs> so awesome. I ended up at Lackawanna. And, and I, think, I think that, like, t- touch upon the – I think Lackawanna gets a very bad rap in our, especially locally. I don't think people understand the opportunities that local local kids have in that that's arrangement that is Lackawanna in the junior college level. You know, naturally the football program is out of control. They're on a national right. level. Right, right, right. Um, yep. Their baseball program is probably right. You know, not a, a close second in terms of putting out a ton of. Division one talent over yeah, over um, a, a long stretch of years. Absolutely. Dom, Dom, you know? Dom Verasho from Lakeland. And, he went there for two years, and now he's at and, uh, Pittsburgh. Right, and and that's where I thought when you came out and decided to go play there, I thought it was such a great move because I didn't think I knew you could play because, like I said, I don't know. I'm not a baseball guy. I'm not around. I don't know the the ins and outs mm-hmm. and the nuances, but. Just the way you carry yourself, you went about your business, the way you worked. I, it, to me, it was perfect because it gave you two more years to only have to spend one year of your NCA eligibility to be able to give yourself an, that next, just another opportunity to go play Division One, and it worked out for you. Absolutely, and junior college. So I was a big academics guy in high school, yeah. And I know junior college doesn't get a great, um, right? Doesn't have a great reputation, so. I was, I was really nervous at first, but once I was there, I mean, I talk about junior college. Of, I talk about kids going to junior college all the time. Yeah, I don't like, think it's done enough. It's not at all. And it is so underrated, junior college. I mean, the talent, I, I have never, okay, I, I have never played on a collegiate team that was as good as my team at Lackawanna for, for either year. And we had new kids each year. Yeah. Um, and obviously there was summer ball where you just have a bunch of kids that are just freaks. But at Lackawanna, we had a bunch of dudes who knew how to play baseball and just didn't get the opportunity because of grades or, or anything like that or exposure. So so what did you um, – so after your two years at Lackawanna, like what did you leave there with degree-wise? Uh, so – I wanted, so I was going to go to Penn State as a nursing major. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to put myself on that track. Mm-hmm. Um, Lackawanna at the time only had a pre-allied health degree, but it was still like your your general biologies, your okay. chemistries and stuff like that. So that's, so I was, I was in a science field. Okay. So graduate Lackawanna, you end up getting that Division One opportunity. You go to Norfolk State. Yep. You have to deal with another. Was this your first year there? You had to deal with another. Uh, yeah, yeah, my first year there. I was uh, a junior. Did you only go one year there? Uh, no, I ended up staying and graduating. Okay, but you had to deal with so not only so sophomore in high school, you snap your forearm like a twig. Mm-hmm. You come through, uh, junior year at Norfolk State. I forget randomly. I was here. I texted you for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, you sent me some weird response, right? Didn't think anything of it. Asked you about it a week later. You're like, "Oh yeah, I was I was hopped up on on you know whatever drugs they gave me at the hospital. <laughs> I tore I, 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 I tore my hamstring <laughs> during practice. I'm like, oh Jesus. Ooh, so wow, huh? I said wow. I yeah. don't know how this happened, but somewhere along, at some point in my career, who became the guy I went to if I had an injury? I'm sorry to hear that. Wow. Did I fail you, Al? You couldn't find yeah. anybody else? Did, yeah, yeah. Did I fail you? <laughs> no, from a lifting perspective. Oh, from a lifting all perspective, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, I need a program to get back. Not like, I hurt myself, like, fix it. 
or give me rehab exercises or something like right. that. Right. Yeah, you did but, actually. Now that I remember, you did send me either your rehabilitation program or your strength and conditioning program that they gave you at Norfolk State. Yeah, it was definitely strength and conditioning. Don't don't uh, make me out to be a bad guy with Tom. There. Yeah. <laughs> Al, what's that feel like? What's what feel like? Tearing your uh your hand. Oh string. God. What's that like? So. I've done some things, but I've were never... you able to wipe your ass? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I was on the meds, no. But... <laughs> were you able so... actually to sit down on the toilet with the torn hamstring? <laughs> so, oh god, I was living. You needed one of those pads. There. Oh, I have, I have so much I could talk about with this, so I'll try to, I'll try to get it all out there quickly. Um, Take your starters, time. So it's funny that Tom brought up how I acted when I broke my arm. When I tore my hamstring, I knew something was wrong. And it was like, it was like I've, I've been there before. So I tore it in the outfield. I dropped to the ground. I stood up and just something felt loose when I was walking. I literally walked to the trainer's office, which is like a five minute walk. I just walked there. Um, and the pain settled in I mean, the day yeah, when right. I couldn't walk. But I mean, I didn't like bat an eye. I just kind of went out with my business. It was like, whatever. What, what is anyone else going to do for me at this, at this, at this point? So, was it painful? Yeah. Um, the day after, I couldn't walk. There's still so, there's there's so many kids that would still be laying in the outfield, <laughs> screaming. Yeah. Listen, if Tom didn't give me words of encouragement, I'd still be laying on the gym floor up at the high school. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, CD. Yeah. Oh, God. So, the story about how I tore it is actually it, it's worth telling for the podcast. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Hooper filled me in. This is absolutely. Uh, oh, I'm so, excited. So the outfielders were uh, fielding, and then coach was like, okay, we want the outfielders to practice game-like base running, which is something I honestly, like, to this day, you don't see a lot of. You're never like, okay, let's let's simulate game base running, I guess. Before a game. So, and our coach, instead of doing, instead of having some of the outfielders run while some of the outfielders in the field, he said, all the outfielders come in, pitchers, game-like outfield." One in center, one in right, one in left. Um, swap out each play. Go balls to the walls. So really early into the practice, the ball's hitting the gap, okay? So me just being a PO, trying to have some fun at practice, we don't get a lot of uh, action. So I'm going ham for this ball. You're getting that ball. That ball is I yours. Didn't know, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get there in time without diving to actually, like, call it off. And – I was in left at the time. So our center fielder was actually a kid on the team who was deaf. And he lost a hearing aid that day because it fell in a puddle on campus. So he has no hearing aids in. He has no idea that I'm in the vicinity he is in. So I'm about to reach out to this ball, and he dives head first. And he lands on my foot, and I flipped over. And my knee snapped, and I didn't tear the muscle. I tore the attachment point off of my knee. So the, wherever the hamstring Tom is wincing right now. That. Does yeah. that does that make wow. him even more impressive that he walked five minutes yeah. to the show? Yeah. Yeah. Just, not just a regular torn hamstring. It was just the attachment point. Which is yeah. So it was the attachment part of my hamstring torn off, uh, tore off. I think I had a sprain of the LCL, and I had a, a grade two calf strain. That was the official injury. Wow. And you just walked yeah. five minutes to the training room. Yeah. No big yeah. Deal. And then uh, no 24 deal. hours later, it was my 21st birthday. <laughs> at a boy. <laughs> and I was on crutches, and I was at Norfolk State University. So my teammates loved their Hennessy. I was, <laughs> I, was not, I was not in any pain. So I was in pain the entire day until it was the night of my 21st birthday. Oh, no, and baby. I was feeling, all good to go. I was feeling loose. I was feeling loose. Like, like, I good. think I can play tomorrow. <laughs> we are good. I can to, take one more run at this. We are good to go. <laughs> but uh, I got surgery the next week, and that was absolutely miserable. It was uh, my first time really away from home, living on my own. And I was in the dorms. So I had one one teammate he was a freshman so he's a younger guy um we got along well but we didn't like he wasn't my guy to like hang out with um i literally i, I was on crutches so when i had to shower and stuff I, lit I literally had to have my teammates bring folding chairs into the bathroom 
and just sit it in the shower. And I would just have to crutch my way there and then just sit on a, a chair and take a shower. So wow. it was, it was really tough. Yeah, it was, it was a really tough few months. Like I, I was a mess. Like that was easily the most out of shape I've ever been. That was definitely a low point during the recovery. Just like, wow. Like my baseball career might be over. My coach doesn't know me that well. It, it wasn't too great. Yeah. So that was one that like these guys might not know, probably don't know. Like, so your coach, the coach that recruited you out of Lackawanna to Norfolk yep. leaves when you get there. How, how, how long were you I there? I wasn't even there yet. So, so I got, so it's weird because I went to a junior college in Scranton, Pennsylvania. How did I end up at a school in Norfolk, Virginia? Um, we had scout day and this pitching coach from Norfolk state at the time, Joey seal, um, showed up to our scout day and I think this is, I think I snorted pre-workout that day. I went into, I went into scout day and I'm like, I was like, okay, I usually throw 80 to 82 miles an hour, but I'm about to be a different animal today. I'll blow out, so, the, I'll blow out the UCL to get 85 we, today. Today's we, the day. We, we painted him as the All-American kid, and now he's snorting uh, pre-workout. <laughs> that, that's another – I, I that's, was really determined at this point. Like, At this point, I was still like, I want to go D1. I want to go D1. Here's my best chance. Um, so I ended up hitting like 86 that day, which if you know me, I never threw – I never threw really fast growing up. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was an accomplishment. And he called me after and he was like, uh, listen, um, I came from Virginia. I really liked you. I think you should consider coming. And that was the only division one offer I got. And I was still young at the time. If, if I revisited this day, I would say strongly consider all division twos and division threes, but division one offered me scholarship. I went, um, couple weeks before school started he texted me he's like hey alex i just want to let you know i got a different job and uh you still have a spot on the team and a scholarship but i'm not going to be there anymore he was the only coach i, I had i was in contact with so hmm. i went in not knowing even who the the coaches were wow al if you had not gone to uh north folk where would you have gone top choice so i had or top honestly, three if you want to give them up honestly okay so the university of scran uh they texted me before i committed and they were like listen like i know we can't give you money but we have a great uh biology and nursing program and i'm gonna be real with you you're one of our top guys like like we want you to be on our team we want you to start for us we want you to be our ace essentially and because it was in scranton and a division three i i didn't even really consider it which is heartbreaking even a thought at because, that point yeah which is heartbreaking to me um and then there was a division two, a uh, Southern Connecticut you know, uh, State University, um, and they really liked me too. Uh, they didn't have as much money as Norfolk State did, but it was a beautiful school in a great area, and it was it was just it looked like a really nice place. Those were probably the top two. Um, there was a division two in North Dakota State as well, which oh, you're you, really you going think, out You there, think North yeah. Dakota, and you're like, oh no way, like, but. They ended up having a really good team. I had a teammate that went there. They had really low tuition, and honestly, that would have been a great a great place for me too. But no, I, cho I chose Norfolk State. I don't regret it, but I definitely should have weighed my other options. Yeah. So was it? So now you're there, hamstring. You're on the mend. I know when you were home, I think you were good to go. You were still kind of on the mend. You're like texting me, "Hey, can we get a workout in? This and that." I'm like, "Yep." Are you like good to do things? Are you gonna re tear this hamstring? Like how far off? Are you like no restrictions, whatever? Um, at that point, when you were on the mend back, right? Was, was that when uh, the head coach? Was that when you got your scholarship pulled? Or right? It was so, after. So I was super nervous this whole time because I'm like, I will. I wasn't playing as well as I know I could have when I was healthy, mm -hmm. and then I get hurt, and it's like that just gives the coach every opportunity to, to kind of like get out of this nest, I guess is what I, I called it. So I'm not trying, like I'm trying to get back as quickly as possible, but like I'm sick of being hurt at this point. I don't want to miss any more time. And so I was just about to be game ready. Like I started throwing off the mound a little bit and um, we had, we had like evaluations before the season. It was kind of weird. Um, and then he was like, "Listen, uh, we we're not gonna we're not gonna have you back." I was I was heartbroken because 
I even said, listen, if you take some or all of my money, like that's cool. But like, this place is really expensive out of state or, or and I was like, can I at least like have a roster spot? And uh, he said, you could, you could try out, but we're not guaranteeing you anything. Mm. So I was like, that just left me bitter, honestly. Mm. I felt like I didn't deserve that. But also, like, it's division, he was a new, co- he was it's a new division coach. one, man. Yeah, man. That's, yeah. that's what people don't understand. Everybody wants, everybody wants to chase that division one scholarship, and you don't realize, you don't hear the backstories like this. You don't this. hear this story, yeah. yeah right, right, you know? right. Like, you go through an injury, it's not, he's not your guy. Right. All of a sudden, he's like, you know what? Yeah, sorry. We're done with you. Maybe, yep. maybe we'll have you. Maybe you can try out, but I can't promise you yeah, anything. Yeah, it's ruthless. That that's, that's what, exactly what happened. That, and 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 it's funny that you say that in that circumstance, right? Because one of the things that has always jumped out at me, and what made like you know, I as an athletic trainer, I wanted to stay in Division One, and that's where I wanted to work. And the thing that got me out of there, part of was every time, like, I, I can remember countless conversations, at, whether it was at Syracuse or Indiana, especially in football, you asked any of those guys on scholarship, right, w- would, mm-hmm. would you let your son play football yeah. and go get a Division One scholarship? Their mm-hmm. response to you, to a man, typically is not unless they're kicking or punting. That's it. Yeah. They're, they're saying, I'm going through this so my son doesn't have to. Mm. I don't want my son going through the rigors. And some of the, you know, the uh, stories such as Al just gave us, they don't want them going through it. But we have people all over the place spending fortunes ch- for their son or daughter to go chase that scholarship. Right. Yep. You know, I don't even really want it. Right, and the ones that are there and know the dark side of it, that like he said, his recommendation is Division Two, II, Division Three. Right. You know, or or at least or at yeah. least make it a stronger consideration, not necessarily exactly. Right. Yep, you definitely weigh all options like one thousand percent, because I mean, who knows? Because I I was never going to be that ace at Norfolk State, mm-hmm. um, just because everyone preached velo at that time and I was just never that guy. So I kind of knew, like I knew I was never going to go to the majors. A lot of people don't, don't understand that. I mean, which is fine. Like some people think they can make it no matter what right. I knew, I knew what I was capable of. Um, and so I literally could have been that dude at a division two or a division three, but because I wanted that D one so bad, yep. I wanted, I wanted to be popular on social media. I, I wanted to tweet out that I, I made a D1 or whatever, but, I mean, it ended up being a mis- not a mistake, but a, a, an experience that could have gone differently. You, you did make it D1, though. I did, yeah, right? Um, I mean, it, it barely I, – I don't even count it sometimes because I didn't end up throwing a game pitch. Like, I'm on the roster. You could still look me up because you freaking put it on the cover of the podcast episode. I did. But... I did. I showed Tom this. Hold on. I didn't show Matt this. No, I will. I will. Week, it, it will. That is a week after surgery, and yes, I'm on my pain meds. It will. It will end up on uh, Instagram, though. But look Not, at this. Nothing. <laughs> nothing sacred with oh, Hooper. Jesus. Dude, our, that's Al, the, I'm sorry, but I would have. I would have backed you up a little bit um, if I had known that was out there. Listen, our headshots. <laughs> our, none of our head. That's the thing here. None of our headshots. None of the pictures we are use good are, pictures, are yeah. good pictures. So, Al, you're. Would you uh, like? Baseball is basically over and done with with you. Would you would you ever consider going to coaching? I would absolutely. Now, I don't know. I've been out of touch. That left a bitter taste in my mouth with baseball, so I, I am kind of out of. That's going to lead my next question, but I want you to finish this. Um, but yeah, I would I would absolutely consider coaching, and I mean I did uh, coach a little bit with Coach Hooper. I don't know if he brought that up at all. He did not. But he did not. Bring it's that up definitely with me. something I would consider. Uh, I just don't know when I'll be ready for something like that. And I don't know what, what level I would that, I would consider coaching at. Make your make your way back to the area after you graduate. Find some plants to look at. We'll find <laughs> a spot. So you kind of said that left a bitter taste in your mouth. So would you say like you don't really miss baseball right now in, in your life, right in this moment in your life? No. Um, I mean, are there times where I'm like, wow, I, I really wish I was like 
playing ball or something like that. I miss all of the friends I made. The like the su- summer ball was great. I'm sure you loved summer basketball. The competition, up like yeah, that. right. Like the yeah. the freedom. Like I of miss it. competing and yes, and I miss I miss that stuff. But I'm okay not having to go to practice, practice every baseball. day. Yep, I'm okay with that. I, I've come to terms with that. Yeah, you're a big Twitch guy now. So no, wait before we get to <laughs> before we get to Twitch. So going <laughs> back, back to this because I wanted to. I don't want to take a step back, but. I told Tom this in the office, didn't believe me. So now Al gets a scholarship pulled from Norfolk, trying to figure out. You start, he started looking at other schools and potentially going to play elsewhere after Norfolk. Mm-hmm. Yep. But he, he looked into it, right? I think, were you looking to go to school at Virginia Tech, or what, what was the deal with Virginia Tech? I know that not was for, Not for baseball. Virginia Tech was just to transfer and kind of finish my degree out because I did an internship there. Yeah. Um, I, I consider going down to a uh, Division three school in New York. It's called Oneana. Okay. Yep. So I played. Um, you know that? Yeah, I've heard of Oneana before. So I played summer ball in the New York Collegiate Baseball League, and the coach there was the head coach of the the um, the the. Is that where you got the uh, championship ring from? <laughs> that was the Northwoods League. Oh, okay. Um. So th- I mean, this is another. Okay. So. Real quick, I was just going to consider going to Division Three in New York because uh, I wanted to play baseball. Um, but just another opportunity that junior college uh, made available for me was it, the Northwoods League. So they say it's right up there with the Cape Cod League. So they say Cape Cod is where the, the stud pitchers go, like your pitchers from Florida and schools like that. And then they say the best college hitters go to the Northwoods. And hmm. um, my co- and Coach Thompson at uh, Lackawanna, being from Minnesota, he knew a couple of guys in the Northwoods League, and they needed a replacement pitcher. So uh, I went in middle of the summer to the Northwoods League. I'm facing dudes from, oh, my God, uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, I faced a dude from Oklahoma who was leading the league in average. I was just facing these, these mammoths. As a as a little kid from Scranton, yeah, but as I that little kid, you, you probably yeah. loved the situation of being able to say like, "Hey, I get to compete." I, get I to loved it. Exactly, I, I you get to up. come on podcasts yes. like this and talk about it. That's exactly <laughs> the answer I was expecting from you. Like, you want that type of competition. You want to you want to go against the best to let you know where you stand against the best. Exactly, and I I competed. Like, was I the first guy out of the bullpen? No, but. When I went out there, like, I was giving it my all, and I was getting these I, – I remember my first strikeout. I struck out a big lefty first baseman from Texas Tech on an outside fastball. It was, like, 83 miles an hour, and it was just amazing. I was like, yeah, like, I'm here. <laughs> Al, if, yeah. can you strike out Hooper right now? 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> Are you yeah, are you even perfect. touching the ball? No, some of my junior high kids that might be part of your me out at this point. Honestly, that might be God. part of your pro day. Dude. Al's gonna come up and <laughs> you're getting in the box against Al. <laughs> you got three. You got three outs, not just three pitches. You got three. We're gonna outs. give him the whole side of the <laughs> inning. <laughs> Does he even follow one off on you? I can, I can get a bat on the ball. Oh, I can follow one off. There yes. it is. That's the word but, we needed. But why we got back onto the baseball before we got to Twitch. So when he was, like, making this decision, okay, finish school, transfer credits, like, I'm in contact with him, right? At this point, mm-hmm. me and Al aren't that far off in age, right? Five, six years, it's not. Mm-hmm. He was a senior, 17-year-old senior. I was 23, not not that far off. So, And at this point when he was in, like, he would come here, we'd, you know, get some conditioning work in on the track, Occasionally, I had to legally let him into the field house. Don't worry. No one's listening. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, we're at this point, and he was getting ready to make this decision. Like, okay, do I – like, this could be the end of my baseball career. Me being the guy, just a guy who coached him, hey, man, you need to do what's best for you. But I also know that what happened at Norfolk, right, did leave a bitter taste in your mouth. If there's yep. any scenario where you're going to regret not playing baseball because you're a baseball player, I know how much you love the sport, right? Mm-hmm. My advice to you would be to exhaust all options and to really thoroughly think it through. Don't just make a, a hasty decision. Think it through yep. because, like, this is the end of your career. Like, you don't get to go back. So right. you need to really come to grips with it, like, that this is going to be the last time. And if you're okay with that, 
well then you know move on from it but if they're if you're ever going to have a regret like oh man i wish i played one more you know explore the option don't lie to me yep. yeah go ahead. Hoop, you, you came up with that on your own yeah all right <laughs> Did, Al, 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 were these Al, were these not the things that I was telling you, Al? They, they were the things you said. Yes, Al. My question yeah. to you. Yes. You told me it only took you a couple, a couple uh, lifting sessions to know wh- Hooper was a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> when you, when you were getting this advice from Hooper, were you still on your meds? <laughs> <laughs> No, I wasn't, but I didn't keep pl- I didn't keep playing baseball, so Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but but at this point but at this point, I mean no, we were he Holy we're over smokes. to Weirdo. He's he's <laughs> huh? Holy smokes, man. Dude, he's he he helped me he was in the dugout when we won our junior high championship the one time. Like I'm just we, trying to figure out how you're trying to give a D one athlete <laughs> advice on things. Like, you almost blew out your knee trying to catch a pass from a girl. <laughs> Not saying girls can't make great passes, but I'm saying it wasn't a good pass at all. And you almost completely blew out your knee. Well, you just said why I almost did it, because it wasn't a good pass at all. So then you let it go over your head onto the next play. It was a reaction, it. Matt. Reaction, bud. My bad, man. I didn't give him advice on what to do. I just, as a, as a coach, I feel like I'm a halfway decent coach. You are. You told a girl not to look lost. We're gonna go down this road. Down this road. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say it every time. Did she not look lost when you're standing in the middle of a basketball court, like looking up, down, side to side? You look lost. That's what you do when you when you're lost. Uh, oh man, great times. Yeah, but yeah, so. <laughs> one uh, one junior high championship uh, under me and Chef's watch because there, of Al. There, that, the, now there was, it makes sense. There was a picture. Al was in it. Al got, Al got in the picture. There were a it couple all times. Comes together. But also because what you said, I feel like if there's one former player that could just come back randomly, hop on a bus, right? Yeah. No questions asked. It's Al. Yep. Yeah, it's Al. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> He's all right. <laughs> He's good. Yep. Anyone He's else now? Nah. I on. absolutely love that. Because, I mean, I did come from the Valley. So, I mean, it is really nice that I come back and, and I'm able to talk with my old coaches and, and people still recognize me and stuff like that. So, Hey, Always. man, you're big time, bud. How can't, how can't you be recognized? What's, what's this Twitch stuff? Yeah, now. Oh, my God. You're a content creator. We're content creators. So we, we understand. I'm, I'm attempting to be a content creator. Al, break it down for Coach Tom. He doesn't really get the yeah, whole I'm Twitch starting, idea. I'm starting to become an old uh, – Bring My it. parents don't get it either, and I, I literally, like, it's the hardest thing to make make sense, right. I guess. So, um, mainly because of COVID, I mean, school shut down. Literally, all I could do was play video games. Okay. I mean, and I know that Twitch is a huge platform where people literally just play video games in front of audiences, uh-huh. and there is an opportunity for um, to make money. Now, I was like, okay, I'm playing video games, like, a full-time job, like, seven, eight hours a day why not at least broadcast it and get some people in your chat to talk to? Like I, I, I never started it because of the money, but it's, it's turned into a little extra spending money so far. So you're making but, money on this. Yes. So there are requirements to meet on but Twitch. I don't mean There's to cut you off, but you have to be good to make money. Let's be real about that. Like you're, you don't know. Okay. So I feel like, would Hooper make money on Twitch? No chance. He, it depends what he's providing, I guess. So, I would, if we could get I'm, some internet not, here, I would Twitch this. Really? I would I live feel like stream this. You had to be good to make money on Twitch. So you need to be. I mean, everyone kind of has something to them. Like, if you're not, if you're horrible at video games, then you better be funny. Right. Or something like that. <laughs> okay. Right. Now, right. I there's I a reason it. I'm not like well known because I'm not amazing at video games and I'm not the funniest kid. But, I mean, um, I've made a couple hundred dollars each month just by literally playing video games in front of, like, 10, 15 people that watch at a time. And they have the option to support me through donations, and it's called subscribing. On Twitch subscribers, you make money. YouTube, you don't. But, um, yeah. So, I mean, people literally just pay to support and watch you play games. So, you're telling me people pay to watch you play video games? Yes. Support. They support. So like I'd go home, I'd go home tonight, turn on turn on Twitch, and just pull yes. up Al and just watch you play 
give a cheap plug, Al. The cheap show. plug to the. So, so if you, as soon as I get off this phone call, I'm actually going live. Yes, so we held them up. If you go to, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Um, <laughs> if you go to <laughs> Twitch.tv/al underscore oos, that's my Twitch handle. You'll see, you'll see me playing MLB the show. I'll have a webcam on. I'll be talking to people if they're if they're interacting with me, and I'll just be playing video games. I saw the other day you had a, an Instagram story. You had like 25 people in there watching you um, at one point. So on, on Twitch, when people are getting off, they can send their viewers to another channel. My buddy – so nap, organically, the most viewers I've had is 32, which I hit last week. Now, I actually hit 98 last week as well because my buddy rated me. He had 108 <laughs> viewers. But, um, yeah. So, so let me ask – let me ask you a question. Does your cell phone number still end in 6126? Yes, it does. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text you one of these days because i got to <laughs> check this out. Okay. Feel free. Right. I mean, I've, right been, I've been going live every night around, around 8 Eastern as long as I don't have and, four. And, to and, I, <laughs> and I, I love he it. Does, dude, he's, he's legit. I, I like it. He's like, I'm trying to get on a schedule. I right? like <laughs> going the same time every, every day. Uh, we yep. do have a member of the Mid Valley Spartans baseball team who is a potential watcher of Al. The one day when we were in the weight room, I made a just a comment to Healy. Right, Healy knows knows Al. He yep. was on that championship team. That'll probably be the last class of guys that know you, because I think that was a, yeah, yeah that, that'll be the last class. So, uh, young kid, sophomore. Right, we were talking about him. Uh, we were talking about Coach Rock. That's how Healy refers uh-huh. to him, and he's like. This kid goes, I know that guy. I think I watch him on Twitch. I go, did you know he was a really good baseball player here? No, I just watch him on Twitch. I'm like, all right. So I text Al that, and be, I'm like, uh, you have a fan in the Mid-Valley. I was born in the wrong time. I know, right? I know. Now's the time for sure. I mean, we're, so sitting, I would... we're sitting here podcast, and we get a couple people listening from Texas. More so we're getting organic. We're doing the same thing he's doing. He's trying right. to get people to watch him. We're trying to get are, listeners. I was in college when Grand Theft Auto first came out. Great game. And I spent <laughs> days at a time playing the thing. Uh-huh. I was making a couple hundred. I didn't get anything. Crazy part is when you got bored in Grand Theft Auto, you drive around trying to yeah. stay in between the lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to observe tra- traffic patterns. So, and, yeah. and then so steal now, a helicopter. <laughs> One of the, to me, it's a little unusual. Grand Theft Auto, okay? So you said it came out a while ago. It is one of the most popular things on Twitch right now because... I could see that. These these top-tier content creators are in these, like, role-playing servers where they get get a character that they need to act as. So if they're a cop, like, they'll be a cop every single day in GTA, and they literally act out these scenarios and stuff. And I mean they're getting hundreds of thousands of people that are watching this. So the top one of the top Twitch streamers had four hundred thousand people watching him the other day. So that is <laughs> how many? Four hundred thousand. Wow. So so what's that? Four Beaver Stadiums, I think. So basically, That's what cool. you're telling are if we have any young listeners, just quit school and just <laughs> just In sports. No, because I'm only a part time Twitch streamer right now because I'm a full time student trying to get my degree. But yeah, but Al. if you if you start if you start Kudos pulling in, you, bud. so Al, if Let's, you if you were if you were going back through it, would you go to Lackawanna and and, and uh, play baseball or go esports? Oh, I'd see if I could do both. <laughs> would have nice. got started. But, yeah. but I mean, probably baseball because I would like to start early, but I could also still like practice on the side. Like yeah. you only, you can only play baseball so much for your life. Correct. Right. Like now, I can only golf and play video games unless I want to get hurt again. So, <laughs> right, big time golfer. Next time he's in the area, it's our fourth. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I suck at golf. So do I, I, so oh. do I. <laughs> yeah. You can't be worse than Hooper. We'll ride in a cart together, bud. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll get out. We'll all get out. Yeah. Oh, and Al, I tell you this every time I see you. I'm sorry for not coming to that that junior that legion game that one time that I told your dad I was going to go to when you know <laughs> when, when we got a little tuned up at cocktails that one that one day I didn't know you back then I feel bad about it now. <laughs> oh, it's all good. I forgive you. Yeah, it, all it means is he 
he would have just known you were weird earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely would have told you never to come back to a game again. <laughs> uh, All right, man. You'd be on me. Wait, um, I want one more thing. To okay. Say yeah, go ahead. On that note, I want to ask Tom. Oh, no. He remembers that I was, I think, his first and only intern. <laughs> yes. He got the head coaching job as the transportation guy or something. Yep. <laughs> Wait, yep. What? I got, I got Al as my, uh, <laughs> like, basically, like a student, um, like a student intern. Yep. Like almost have like a like a student teacher, but he was like a inter like a student intern. Like I would... legitimately got credits towards my diploma. Yeah, and, and it, like it, last it took... period of the day, he he, yep. he came down with me and yep. was in my office. What you do? Gave him work to do. Chilling. I think I think one day we got Wendy's. Like it was <laughs> right. <probably> some... <laughs> It was it was a blast. Yeah, that makes sense. He probably he probably I'm, got I'm a kind lemonade. Of you want to go get some to eat? Sure, why <laughs> yep. not? Let's did, go. Did, did, did Tom get lemonade? I'm sure he probably did. Oh, I don't I don't remember. Big time one. lemonade guy. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. That's awesome. Yeah. You you were the only one too. I I figured I would be, but <laughs> yeah, that died quick. That's a special guy, man. You gotta t- you gotta be a special person for Tom to pull that type of string for you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if you remembered, but yep. yeah. He, he, well, he didn't until you said something. No, I did. You could see I the did. light bulb go. No, like, oh, I do remember that. No, 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 no. I remember that. All right, well, I told you. You thought you thought this was going to be a 10-minute thing. We're on an hour three, nine. No, it's, you're, you're very vague, and I wanted the information, and you're like, <laughs> uh, oh, I'll call you in between this hour and this hour and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, I'll just well, wait. No, you asked me. You're like, you're, you're well, it's a podcast, right? You, you, one, you don't liken yourself as an interesting person, right? You had a lot of good stories to tell. Um, <laughs> but you, uh, you're like, I'm not that interesting. And you somehow thought this was going to be a 12-minute ordeal. You're like, can I live stream while we do this? I'll just <laughs> mute it. I'm like, I guess, like, if you just want to have a, a, a muted live stream for an hour, you're like, oh, this is going to take yeah, an no, hour? That, that would have been a bad idea. That I'm like, uh, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you have plenty of stories. You went from Mid-Valley, snapped your arm. Tom had to come out and get you. You went to Lackawanna, then went to Norfolk, had a coaching change. Like, you look at plants, you stream Twitch. Pretty interesting <laughs> guy. I mean, we want to get that all out there. Highlight cool. our former athletes here. You know, I really appreciate the opportunity. Hey, Seriously. hey, we appreciate you. Um, it's nine thirty. We know you probably have people waiting in uh, the uh, in the Twitch yeah. stream. And, Maybe. And I'm oh Jesus, what is this? I don't know. So appreciate you. We'll let you go. It was good hearing from you, bud. Next time it was you, really ne- good catching Al, up. Al, great guys. talking to you, man. Next time you're you in, too, you too. Next time you're in, fire off a text. We'll go golfing if you come in in the summer. For sure, for sure. Matt. Uh, Tell your parents I said hello. I will. You do the same for me. Oh, don't worry. Mary Ruth listens. Sweet. <laughs> what about my man, Russell? Russell dude, does not listen. No chance. He, he still has a flip phone, bud. So I don't know if he <laughs> can get the Spotify or YouTube or anything with that. Yeah. But I'll tell him he said hello. I will love that for sure. All right. I appreciate it. You you tell Axe I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll talk to you guys soon. Right? See you, bud. See ya. Later. Uh, Al. He didn't even get all the way through later. I know, sorry. He didn't even give him the respect to finish the word. No, oh, man. man. You hang up on him. No, it. man. Oh, God. One of my favorites. It's great. Oh, Whose no. idea was that? That was your idea to get him on the... Yeah. He oh, did say. Great yeah. call, man. He is. He's, yeah. It was. He talks well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Very... He's another one, again, just well above his years in maturity. Yes. Yeah. Like, he's you one know, that you look have... at like your <clears throat> Mid-Valley should be proud. Yes. Yep. Yeah, you could you could put him in any setting, socially. Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah, and he's gonna be. I uh, <laughs> he's definitely a person that should get back into coaching. Like his. <laughs> well, that's that's should get funny. into coaching. He when he said about I don't know when I when I'll be ready and he was ready as a sophomore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, to coach, like, like I he's mean, yeah, he's too uh, he's smart, knows the game well. He's gonna be good with he could. I feel like he could coach. Younger kids, right. older, it doesn't matter. Right. Right. And he's going to he's gonna command the respect. Hopefully, I don't know. I know he's out in Penn State, Maine. I don't think we got that out where he's currently going to school. He's yeah, Penn State, State College. Maine. Yep. Plant. Maine. plant. Oh, what P- was pathology? It? Pathology, yes. 
Yeah. That nice, blew, Hooper. That blew me away. But he would I be. Was blown away at that. He would be. It's very interesting. Yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. Right. Here's another one. Maybe future. I don't know if he's. I plan. I, I imagine plant pathology. You don't get too many jobs in any PA. So I, I don't could know give if he's him gonna... an internship in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> he takes one look at my grass. Oh my god! <laughs> what do you think here? Uh, I got any disease? My Al. grass have any diseases? What do we got here? <laughs> Al, I got an internship experience for you. But yeah, no, he would be one Throw that. Throw it on your portfolio. He would be top notch. Any former players to come back. No offense to any of the other former players, but if to, to come back and coach Mid Valley mm -hmm. to be a coach on this staff, he'd be number one choice, no doubt. So next for you. Or just as in general? For me, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure for Krope, too. I'm sure oh, he I would thought be... you were speaking for Krope No, 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 for me, but like, I'm okay. sure for Krope as well. Yeah, yeah. So next week... Uh... I think you would recommend not hitting balls into a fence, too. <laughs> just throwing this throwing that out. Yeah, I wouldn't have to worry about Al doing Listen, that. Listen, yeah, he, yeah he's probably, he'd, probably be, he'd probably be smart enough then to do that. This doesn't not seem do like a good idea. Who... Yeah, okay. Okay. So you're going to work on Ronnie for next week? That's the road you want to go down, <laughs> sure. That's gonna He's be the next one, yeah. That's gonna be a conversation. Yep. That's gonna be interesting. <clears throat> yep. So tease the like audience. This. Yep. This is where the music starts coming in. We don't hear it right now. The music is in. Leave them cliffhanger. Ronnie Tomasetti, potential next week. Ron Dog. Or if Ronnie tells us to kick rocks, Sam, eh, maybe someone else. Maybe Russell? Who knows? Maybe Russell. Make sure you let them know that Al said hi. We it's still been. we still got to get Zach. Oh yeah, Zach's Zach said we wanted to talk. Zach's a very good one to have. Zach could be a good conversation too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, chooping it up, episode ten, in the books. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure, Matt. Tom. Great Hoop. night. It's Stevie, way late. Stevie, Stevie Hooper. Yeah. Stevie, Stevie Wonder. Wonder. Hooper. Hoopy. Gotta go. <laughs> we will see you in the next one. Thank you for listening.